Apple might not believe it anymore, but small phones are great. I miss when mini phones are around, and I think it's one of the reasons why I like flip style phones, is that you can still have a whole phone package just condensed into a small body. I don't wanna carry around a seven inch tablet. Do you remember the Samsung Galaxy Mega? That thing was nuts. This is the Asus Zenfone 10. And right in a way, I wanna comment on the green of the phone because it's beautiful, but let's take a look and see what else is in this box. Here we have a USB-C to C cable and it looks like that standard three feet and it's made of that plaster scene kind of plastic. And we also have a charging brick. Whoa. Wow, that is something special and it is a 30 watt charger as well, which is the speed that the phone can charge at. So it's great that they give it a fast charger in the box, not something you see very often. And here I'm assuming it's all the warnings telling you that the phone is dangerous. Oh, it comes with a case and it's not even the default clear one that you get with all the budget phones. Let's see. Oh, this does not feel nice. Flimsy, but we'll, we'll try it on. You know, looks can be deceiving. User guide and a SIM popper, which we'll take to see what's inside here. Maybe it has an SD card slot, because that would be, that'd be crazy. And man, this green is gorgeous. I love it. It's like a sage green. It reminds me of recycling. I really like it. This is actually one of my favorite shades of green. To compare it to the Zenfone 9, looks extremely similar. I prefer this new kind of more minimal backing design compared to last year. Last year used to say it had the nine and the big Zen phone on the bottom. I really like the A. I mean, I've already talked about it enough, but I like the A on this, but everything looks pretty darn similar otherwise. I also like the texture of it. It's a little bit grippy. It almost feels like an egg carton or something. You kind of hear again when I put my fingers over it. And then a big Asus Zen phone on it. So you know exactly what phone you have and a little red arrow pointing to the cameras. I like the uneven camera bump as well. It's really showing that they're taking what they need. That main camera has a bigger bump than the secondary camera there. I like it. I like the look. On the front, we have our five 5.92 inch screen. This is a 144 hertz AMOLED screen, which bodes well that it's gonna look really good. So we'll, we'll take a look at that when we get it powered on, but right away, this is holdable, like really good reaching to all sides, even with kind of still gripping the phone and the others. Though you still might have to do a little bit of a balancing act to get to the top of the phone. I don't think it's that bad at all. Very, very nice and very light. Let's weigh it and see what how much it weighs. 177 grams. I think it's advertised as 172. So, you know, there's a little bit of a margin error there, but either way, feels very light in the hand and very, very portable. I, I don't feel like you really notice this in your pocket. And that's coming from somebody who is, again, using a flip phone. These feel very similar, just in different shapes. Opened up, it is quite a bit smaller. And I, I actually enjoy it though. Uh, again, flip phones are kind of the best of both worlds in portability and screen size. On our metal side rails here, we have our fingerprint scanner and power button, our volume rocker and antenna lines. On the top, we have antenna lines and a headphone jack. On the left, we got nothing but antenna lines. And on the bottom, we have our SIM tray, a little mic hole, USB-C and speaker. So we have a dual SIM slot, great for people who travel or have a work phone number and a personal and don't want two devices. Getting pretty common, but always appreciated. With that, as you note, it does not have an SD card slot. So you're stuck with what you get. And you might've noticed that little bit of rubber in the SIM tray. This is water resistant IP68, so you'll be fine with dropping in the pool. Take all the pool picks you want. Underneath this Gorilla Glass Victus is a 4,300 milliamp hour battery, which should last you quite a bit. We had laps to take a look and we'll talk about that later. But well, I think the last thing to do before turning this on is let Linus tell you about our sponsor, Super Micro. Big thanks to Supermicro for sponsoring this video. Supermicro's H13 series servers are here. They're based on fourth generation AMD Epic CPUs supporting a wide variety of workloads to help businesses achieve their goals. They're available with up to a mind blowing 128 cores per CPU. That's up to 256 in a dual socket server. And with AMD's 3D vCache technology, even the most demanding enterprise computing requirements feel like nothing. So take your productivity to the next level by visiting the link in the description to learn more about Supermicro's AMD powered server solutions. All right, while this is turning on, let's try out the case. Well, you know what? I kind of like the look. It's going to protect the camera bump there. As you see, the cameras aren't popping out or anything like that. It's got the cutouts for everything you need. It actually does not feel bad in the hand. Whether or not it's going to protect your phone, like maybe not, but even protecting it from that little bit of a lip on the screen and the camera is nice. But I got to say, it does feel good in the hands, especially for an included case. Hey. Powering the Zenfone 10, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that we're seeing in all the flagships and we know performs amazingly, so that's great to see. And then we have the 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage model, but you can get an 8 gig and 128 gigs of storage model or a 8 and 256. It would have been great if they had an SD card slot, but what can you do? 
This is also running on Android 13. They promised two major OS updates and four years of security updates, and it has 5G, Wi-Fi 7 capabilities, as well as Bluetooth 5.3. So for a modern phone, this is looking pretty great. One thing that's really neat about the system preferences is they actually have a way to switch between stock Android and then Asus Optimized. So if you click on the more for Asus Optimized, you can actually change some of the features to be whether they're like on stock Android or this new skin, as well as just how you want to change your volume to work, how you want your incoming calls to work, even just the size of the clock on the main screen. One thing I think a lot of people will want to change or experiment with is the quick settings panel. So you can have it be, again, like stock Android or this new Asus Optimized way. Taking a look at it though, this looks like the old Android way of just having circles for everything versus the kind of big panel that the new stock Android has. I think the old way looks a lot better where you have a lot more information on screen versus these big bubbles. So I would probably actually use this Asus Optimized panel, but it's nice that they give you the option through all of these different settings. Let's try setting up the fingerprint scanner and seeing how fast it is. I've got high hopes here. One thing is that the button's a little bit hard to find because it's pretty recessed in there and like pressing it with the tip of my finger is a little challenging, but yeah, that's a really Really good fingerprint scanner. I like that a lot. That's pretty much it for software. It's just pretty basic Android. They don't add a whole lot. Looking through the apps here, it's pretty much just whatever we added from our labs testing. So let's get into testing the display with some Crab Rave. It sounds pretty good. I would say it sounds very clear. It does have stereo speakers, so it's using the earpiece as well as the bottom speaker to give you a bit more of a wider soundstage. I wouldn't say there definitely is a whole lot of separation, but it doesn't sound like it's only coming out of this bottom speaker, which is great. As for clarity, sounds good. There's a bit of bass there and everything like that, though I do wish it got a bit louder. They might have reduced the volume so it doesn't get to that crackly level, which I guess is a fine trade-off. I just wish they were able to find a way to make it a bit louder. As for the display, it's an AMOLED. Everything looks deep and clear and the colors look really punchy. I'm I'm sure there are settings in there where you can change the vibrance of the screen, but I'm somebody who usually leaves everything on default and I think it looks really, really good. Now let's talk about cameras. Por qué? All right, these big bad boys on the back are some beefy cameras. We have a 50 megapixel main camera that has OIS and our 13 megapixel ultra wide. Some people prefer a telephoto, but I feel like I use my ultra wide quite a bit more and this is a 120 degree one, so everything looks pretty wide without too much distortion on the outside, but we'll take a couple pictures and see. One of the big selling features about this phone is the hybrid gimbal system in this main camera. So we have normal OIS, standard view, which is using EIS, hyper steady and adaptive. And to keep adaptive simple, it pretty much just changes through those different OIS modes to give you the best shot possible depending on how much you're shaking. As you see, we switched to the black one here. Is this one I took outside, took some photos and I wanted to keep the green looking pristine. So let's take a look and see what I was able to capture. It's a bright day today. Finally summer here in Vancouver and the colors are looking good. We get the pink of the flowers with the green and yellows of the leaves and grass. It does seem to lose a little bit of detail in the grass on the side of the planter, but nothing looks too, too bad. The dynamic range looks pretty solid. This second photo here is the same image just with the 50 megapixel mode. And I like the contrasty look just a little bit more. I don't know if it's just a little bit of movement from when I was adjusting the settings, but everything looks pretty clear. And you get a little bit more detail back in the grass and the planter on the side though, it still struggles a little bit. Moving on to the next photos of the motorcycles. Again, the colors look pretty darn solid with the colors of the bikes not looking too washed out. The blue and purple of the rear bike and the nice black of this front bike while still keeping a lot of contrast and detail in the rear trees here. Turning around to the more open side where the sky has a bit more of a chance of blowing out the photo. Things still look pretty good. It is a challenging photo with the detail on this tree looking a little mushy, but the main subjects look quite good. It has good focus. And you always get a bit of a depth of feel between the visor on the bike and the tree in the background, though I think the trees in the back here look quite bad. It's up to you and your sensitivity, that kind of stuff though. Some people don't really notice the artifacting. But when you switch to the 13 megapixel, I feel like a lot of those problems are solved. You still get the sharpness in the tree with the details on the bike. You do start to get a little bit of an HDR effect where it almost seems like there's an unnatural glow on some section of the photo. I don't think it looks too bad, and this is something I would definitely want to show off to say, yeah, <laughs> I drive a cool motorcycle. On the front here, we have our 32 megapixel selfie camera. So this is actually interesting because it's an RGBW camera. So compared to the Zenfone 9, you get 67% more light, and they say 50% less noise. So your nighttime photo should look pretty good, but even here in the brightness, we see that everything looks very clear. You can see all my pores, my beard hairs, nothing super unflattering, but also I'm not smooth and looking like a cartoon character, which is great. These 32 megapixel photos are being binned down to eight megapixels, so they're much more easy to share, but 
as you see, you're not losing any detail or anything like that. Again, giving a bit more of a challenging photo with the sunlight. You get a bit of lens flare, but I wouldn't say it's anything that completely ruins the photo, but it's something to be aware of if you are somebody who takes a lot of photos outside. Up next, we're gonna take a look at some video I took outside to see if there's any wind noise and how the stabilization looks just on the default mode with no changes. Doing some jiggling, doing some walking like I just normally would, holding the phone. Yeah, it looked pretty good. Even without any stabilization mode on and just having that OIS, things looked really stable. I am not a super, graceful walker but you can see things look pretty darn steady and even when i was shaking the phone it didn't look super jello-y or some things you can get with eis uh, it looked pretty darn clear and the mic sounded pretty true to what i sound like and the wind noise though audible was not completely ruining the video let's take a look at this next video that has stabilization on to see if it made a huge difference it does punch in a little bit which is normal for uh electronic image stabilization where it's zooming in a bit to compensate for shake but I am shaking the phone a little bit. I'm kind of walking a little silly. I don't know if you can tell from the shadow. Uh, and now walking normally. Seems pretty smooth. Again, pretty windy. Wow, that is really smooth. It looked like I had it in a gimbal. All those movements where I was shaking it, couldn't tell at all. Though it is punching in the frame a bit and you're losing some footage on the outside, it is definitely worth it if you're somebody who's going to be using this outside when you're hiking or skiing as long as you're paying attention or just on a bumpy road wow this this looks really really good then i took one more video with the wind noise solution on so it actually has a custom mic setting for wind noise reduction so let's see if that affects how i sound and if it's able to reduce the wind outside it's still just a little windy it's not too bad but pretty equal to what it was for the other videos uh does it sound any better Let's uh, find out. Sounded pretty similar. <laughs> I'm not super impressed with that result, especially because I feel like my audio sounded a little odd at some points. I don't feel like it was able to reduce the amount of wind noise when I was speaking or when it was completely silent and there was just a little bit of wind. Maybe for somewhere where there was like a ton of wind, it would make a difference, but I'm not completely sold on this. One thing I forgot to do is take an ultra wide photo. So let's take one now, especially with this challenging lighting. It should give us a good idea on if this is a bit of a sacrifice of this sensor or if it's just as good as the main one. It looks okay. Like it is a 13 megapixel photo, so it's not gonna be as high res as that 50 megapixel one. I would say the distortion reduction does look pretty strong. Like you don't get that weird warping fish eye effect on the outside, though you do get a pretty noisy photo. It doesn't just let that background be dark while the foreground and main subjects are lit up. It just wants to bring everything up to the same level which really makes the background look pretty off color and dirty. It looks fine, but not as good as your main camera. So for performance, looking at these graphs from labs, the results are interesting when you compare them to last year's Zenfone 9. So even though this has the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, when you compare it in app launch testing, the Zenfone 10 actually performs worse compared to the Zenfone 9 almost across the board. Whether the app is launching hot or cold, there seems to be a bit more of a delay launching on this newer phone. Though in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, it does perform better than the Zenfone 9 by quite a margin. Then when we look at gameplay results for Dolphin, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, and Unhappy Raccoon, the results are almost the same for every game, though the 10 does outperform the 9 in Genshin Impact by a bit of a margin there. In the battery longevity test, the Asus Zenfone 9 and 10 both perform extremely well with 23 hours. Awesome. In the battery stress test, which is the worst possible scenario, the Zenfone 10 outperforms the 9 by about half an hour at 3.3 hours, and compared to the other flagship phones we've tested so far, performs pretty standard. One disappointing lab result is the screen brightness. So in SDR mode, we were only able to get a max of 420 nits, <laughs> nice. When compared to the Zenfone 9, we're able to get 430 nits, or really any other phone that we've tested so far, this is quite a low result. That just means in regular use, it might not get quite bright enough outside compared to some of the competition, but when you're just like sitting in Inside using it, this does feel quite bright. It's hard to say, because we're only taking a quick look at it. I can't go and use it for a week and see if it really made a huge difference though. One thing to note is that the HDR peak brightness is 1100 nits, which, you know, is pretty darn decent. Overall, I've been impressed with how Asus have been committed to this Zenfone and this smaller size, and I hope they keep it up. At 799 euros and likely 799 US dollars as well, this is a pretty complete package. It's not a whole lot cheaper than some of the other flagships. Like I think the S23 is around 800, 850. But if you like these smaller phones, you don't seem to be compromising compared to these other larger phones. And plus, it comes in a bunch of fun colors, which means you can choose a phone that you actually like the look of. Plus you have the Kinex accessory line, you have the fun photo modes like hyper clarity and light trails, 
and you get a headphone jack. I think if you're somebody who doesn't like folding phones or you're somebody who's given up on Apple ever making a small phone again, this seems to be the go-to choice for a smaller phone. But what do you think? Let us know down below. Is this the phone to convince you to go smaller? Are you still somebody who wants the Ultra Plus Max? Why?